Many black people in the United States were told by their parents and grandparents that they were native black Americans. In other words, they did not come from Africa as slaves, but already lived in America before even the Europeans came. However, after getting an ancestry test, it becomes hard to believe they had native black American ancestors. It's because the results show they have mainly African roots. That's when black people get disillusioned, thinking that they really are from Africa and that their parents lied to them. However, that's not true. No one lied. The problem lies in the ancestry test. Because it has become a belief that all black people are from Africa, the ancestry test focuses more on proving this belief right, ignoring other traces. Yet, most tests show 0.8% Native American ancestry. So, is it possible that the ancestry test you are getting is wrong and is missing something? In this video, let's find out. The Black History Archives Let's talk about how DNA is inherited so you have a basic understanding of how it works. You get 50% of your DNA from your father and 50% from your mother. Your each parent, in turn, inherited 50% of their DNA from their each parent, and so on. Here's something that might be confusing if you're new to DNA. When we say you inherit 50% of your DNA from each parent, it doesn't mean you get an even 50% split of all their genetic material. Instead, you get a random 50% of their genetics. In other words, simply, if your one parent has 50% genes for black eye color and 50% genes for brown eye color, it does not mean you will get either 50% in full. You can get 25% of black and 25% of brown eye color. Genes for eye color do not work that simply, but you might get the idea of what I want to say. To simplify, let's imagine your father is 100% African and your mother is 50% African and 50% Native Black American. You would get 50% of your DNA from each parent, so you would be 50% African because that's the entirety of your father's genetic contribution. But your mother's contribution isn't as straightforward. You might think you would end up 25% African and 25% Native Black American, but that's not necessarily the case. She could pass on all of her African DNA and none of her Native Black American DNA, meaning you would be 50% African. Now let's take this a step further. If you have a sibling, your mother could pass on a completely different combination of her DNA to them. Even though you are full siblings, you only share about half of your DNA because each of you gets a different random 50% from your parents. So, while you might get all of the African DNA, your sibling might get all of the native black American DNA, yet both of you are still 50% African from your father. In this case, your sibling can get 50% African and 50% Native American, while you can be 100% African. Here's a reminder to please support us so we can make more videos for you by subscribing to our channel and giving the video a like. We want to build a strong community and we need your support. Let's continue now. To understand it better, let's have another example to see how your Native American genes can be completely lost in your genetic makeup. Imagine a scenario where your great-grandfather on your father's side was 100% Native Black American and your great-grandfather on your mother's side was also 100% Native Black American. Despite this, you, the great-grandchild, do not have any Native Black American DNA. Here's how this could happen. In Generation 1, we have your great-grandparents. On your father's side, your great-grandfather was 100% Native Black American, and your great-grandmother was 100% African. On your mother's side, the situation was the same. Your great-grandfather was 100% Native Black American, and your great-grandmother was 100% African. Moving to Generation 2, the grandparents, the genetic mix begins. Your grandfather on your father's side inherited 50% of his DNA from each parent, making him 50% Native Black American and 50% African. He married your grandmother, who was 100% African. On your mother's side, your grandfather was 100% African, while your grandmother inherited 50% of her DNA from each of her parents, making her 50% Native Black American and 50% African. 
By generation three, your parents have a mix of genetic material. Your father inherited 50% of his DNA from his mixed race father, who is 25% native black American and 25% African, and 50% from his fully African mother, making him 25% native black American and 75% African. Similarly, your mother inherited 50% of her DNA from her fully African father and 50% from her mixed race mother, who is 25% native black American and 25% African, making her also 25% native black American and 75% African. Finally, in generation four, you inherit 50% of your DNA from each of your parents. Given the randomness of DNA inheritance, it's possible that you received only the African DNA from both of your parents. From your father, you could have inherited your 50% African DNA, and from your mother, you could have also inherited her 75% African DNA, making your 100% African. As a result, you could be 100% African, despite both of your great-grandfathers being 100% native black American. This scenario illustrates how the randomness of genetic inheritance can result in you, the great-grandchild, having no native black American DNA even though it was present in your ancestors. What really happened is that in every generation, the native black American part of the chromosome was not passed on due to randomness. And ultimately, the great-grandchild did not get any native black American DNA. To help clarify, think of a deck of cards. A standard deck has 52 cards. If we shuffle the deck and deal you 26 cards, that's your half. Then we reshuffle and deal another 26 cards to your sibling. If we repeat this process, you will see that each of you will have about half of the same cards, around 13, but the other half will differ. This is how you share some, but not all of your DNA with your siblings. These analogies illustrate that you inherit a random half of your parents' DNA, not a complete 50% split of everything they have. This randomness explains why siblings can have different genetic makeups despite having the same parents. If your DNA test doesn't show Native American ancestry, but you suspect it exists, consider testing other family members. A sibling might have inherited that portion of DNA, and if your parents or grandparents are still living, their DNA can provide valuable insights. However, given rarity at its best, there are chances that all your siblings might not have Native American DNA despite each parent having 50% of it. You should also know that ancestry tests use sophisticated statistical methods and algorithms to estimate your background, but sometimes they don't hit the mark. These tests examine around a million specific spots in your DNA. They group nearby spots together, compare your DNA with that of people whose ancestry is already known, and then use statistical analysis to predict your heritage. Consider a genetic variant that's very common in East Africa, but rare elsewhere. If you have this variant, it's fairly easy to trace its origins. But if the variant is found across Europe, the Americas, and Asia, pinpointing its source becomes trickier. In such cases, the algorithm might struggle to assign a precise ancestry. For instance, if your test reveals regions of both North American and Southeast Asian ancestry, but one area is unclear, it could be from either region. Testing companies might use surrounding DNA to make an educated guess. Yes, they are always a guess. If the unclear area is surrounded by Southeast Asian DNA and those regions are relatively large, the algorithm might assign it to Southeast Asia. However, this can lead to errors, especially with Native American ancestry. The challenge in accurately identifying Native American DNA comes from historical and research biases. Most genetic studies have concentrated on European genomes, leading to a wealth of data on European-specific genetic variants. In contrast, there is far less information on variants specific to the Americas. This explains why genetic tests can provide detailed ancestry breakdowns for European origins, even down to specific counties, while regions like East Asia or the Americas might receive broader, less precise labels. Native American data is particularly limited. 
Historically, genetics research has been Eurocentric, and when Native American groups were included, it was often done poorly, leading to skepticism among many communities due to past mistreatment. Additionally, historical migrations and forced assimilations have further blurred distinct genetic markers. As a result, Native American DNA might be inaccurately labeled or listed as unassigned. However, progress is being made. Now, you know why you don't get Native American DNA in your ancestry test, despite being a native black American. Share this video with anyone who is confused and tell us, have you gotten your ancestry or DNA results? What does it say? Is it showing African or Native American DNA? In the comments section right below, let us know what your parents, grandparents, or great-grandparents told you about their ancestors. Let's see whether we can build a connection here with you sharing ancestors with someone else here. Would you like us to make more videos? If yes, please support us by subscribing to the Black History Archives and clicking the bell icon. You can check out more videos on our channel too.